Calculating insulin dosing begins by securing an insulin administration order from the student's primary care physician or practitioner. Bare minimum information that must be included in this form include the student's name, the student's date of birth, and the date that the order was written so that we can keep track of the most current orders. Additional information might include the student's address, school name, school nurse's name, school phone, and school fax. The primary care practitioner will then also describe and identify the student's diagnosis or what type of diabetes they have, in this case type 1. The type of insulin that the student is taking, in this case Novolog insulin, and the administration type or how we're going to give the insulin to the student either by syringe and vial or an insulin pen or an insulin pump. In this case it will be administered by syringe and vial or an insulin pen. Next the primary care practitioner will identify what the carbohydrate ratio is for each of the meals and snacks to be eaten at school. You'll notice in this student's case their carbohydrate ratio for breakfast one unit for every 12 grams of carbohydrates is different than the carbohydrate ratio for lunch which is 1 to 18 grams of carbohydrates and for snacks where they'll receive one unit of insulin for again every 18 grams of carbohydrates eaten. Next the practitioner identifies the correction target blood glucose in this student's case 120 milligrams per deciliter and they identify their correction factor for elevated blood glucoses. In this case, the student will receive one unit of insulin for every 75 milligrams per deciliter of blood glucose above correction target blood glucose. And last, the primary care practitioner will identify how the calculations for the insulin dosing are to be rounded, whether to be rounded to the nearest whole unit, as in the R student's case, or the nearest half unit. Once we have the insulin administration orders, we're ready to go ahead and begin calculating insulin dosing. The insulin dose calculator shown here is a wonderful tool to help you calculate insulin dosing. Insulin dosing is calculated in three different steps. First, we calculate the amount of insulin needed to cover the carbohydrates a student will be eating during a meal or snack. Second, we calculate the correction bolus or the amount of insulin needed to cover elevated blood glucoses. Last, we put those two calculations together and then round the number to the nearest half or whole unit in order to identify the total amount of insulin that will be administered to the student for this meal or snack. First we begin by calculating the amount of insulin needed to cover the carbohydrates the student is eating. In this first box, you'll notice the label is grams of carbohydrates. To get this, this number, you're going to take the amount of carbohydrates located in each item in a student's meal or snack and add them all together. Carbohydrate information could be obtained from the school cafeteria or the school's nutrition services department. You can also obtain it from nutritional labeling on the packaging of food. And last, using certain free apps such as MyFitnessPal will help you identify how many carbohydrates are in a given food item. But again, we calculate the total amount of carbohydrates eaten by adding up the amount of carbohydrate in each component of the student's meal or snack. Next we're going to go ahead and divide that by the carbohydrate ratio. You'll notice that this title or label on the box is all in capital letters. That indicates that this particular figure comes from the insulin administration orders. So in this case, this student's carbohydrate ratio from their insulin administration orders is 30. So we're going to take the total grams of carbohydrates eaten, or 120, divide by 30, and that gives us 4 units of insulin needed to cover the amount of carbohydrates eaten, or another way to title for it is the carbohydrate bolus. We're then going to transcribe the number from this box 
down to the first box in step three that is also labeled carbohydrate bolus. Next, we're gonna to move to step two. We're calculating how much insulin we need to correct a high blood glucose. We took the student's blood glucose using the glucometer and found their blood glucose to be 240. That number is copied into this box that says blood glucose. Once again, you'll notice that the label under this second box is all in capital letters, indicating that this number came directly from the insulin administration orders. It, for this particular student, their correction target is 120, so we're going to take 240, the total blood glucose identified in checking their blood glucose, minus 120, which is their correction target, and that equals 120, or the amount to be corrected. We're going to divide that then by another number taken directly from the insulin administration orders. The correction factor for this student is 30, so we're going to take 120 and divide it by 30, and that gives us four units of insulin that we need to cover the elevated blood glucose. Another title for this is the correction bolus. We're then going to take this number, or the correction bolus, and transcribe it from here down to the second box in step three. In step three, we're going to add together the total amount of insulin needed for the carbohydrate bolus, or to cover the amount of carbohydrates eaten, and we're going to add that to the correction bolus, or the amount of insulin needed to correct a high blood glucose. So 4 plus 4 gives us our total insulin dose, or 8. And remember, in this case, we're to round to the nearest whole unit. Since 8 is at a whole unit, we're just going to leave the, in the number alone. So we will be giving a total of 8 units of insulin to the student for this snack. Remember, too, down at the bottom of the insulin calculator, is a nice little table that goes over information about how to round to the nearest whole number and the nearest half unit as well. Let's try another example. Once again, let's work through another example of calculating insulin dosing. In this instance, again, we start out by calculating the amount of insulin needed to cover the carbohydrates it eaten by a student. So for this particular meal, the student's going to be eating 95 grams of carbohydrate. We take that number, or 95, and divide it by their correction carbohydrate ratio from the insulin administration orders, and in this case, it is 30. So 95 divided by 30 equals 3.2, or the amount of insulin needed to cover for the carbohydrates to be eaten. This carbohydrate bolus is then copied from the, this particular box in step number one down to the first box in step number three, also labeled carbohydrate bolus. The next step is again to calculate the correction bolus needed to correct for high blood glucoses. This time when we took the student's blood glucose, we found it to be 101. So we wrote that in the first box here. We're going to subtract from 101, we're going to subtract the correction target. Again, all in capital letters, so we're taking that directly from the insulin administration orders. So 101 minus 120 equals minus 19. Anytime this number is zero or a negative number, we don't have to worry about correcting for a high blood glucose because the blood glucose is right in the range that we want it to be, or lower. So, in this particular instance then, because the blood glucose is lower than, or less than, the, cor the correction target, the correction bolus is a zero. We'll then transcribe that number from there down to the same box in step three that's also labeled correction bolus. Finally, to get our insulin dose, we're going to take our carbohydrate bolus from step one and add it to our correction bolus from step two to equal the amount of insulin we need to give. 
which will be 3.2 units. Now remember, we're almost done, but not quite yet. We need to round that number to the nearest whole unit. And again, if you take a look at the bottom of the calculator, you'll see instructions when rounding an insulin dose calculation to the whole unit or to the half unit. In this case, we're rounding to the whole unit. And the rules tell us that with it, if the um, blood glucose level is between 0.2 and 0.4 on the after the decimal point, then we're going to round it down. So 3.2 will be rounded down to become 3 units of insulin needed for this total insulin dosing. Now that we've practiced a bit, you too should be ready to help monitor or to calculate insulin dosing. Remember, too, always be sure to double check your calculations and you are always welcomed and encouraged to use the calculator.